This is Black Market Leadership, the underground resource for disruptors and status quo breakers. Hello, welcome back to Black Market Leadership. Boy, very, very excited today. Today, we're going to talk about a topic which is a really, really cool topic in leadership development. And if you're listening to this, let me tell you, not a lot, not a lot of people use this resource. What resource am I talking about that has so much of an impact in leadership development and leadership coaching, management coaching, streaming services? Yes, Netflix. Hulu, Amazon Prime, they are just, it, they're bundled, bundled with, with gold, leadership development gold. There's so many great resources to capitalize on. And shockingly, not a lot of people are doing it or utilizing it. So to have this discussion with me today, I'm bringing along a friend of mine, Jody McCall. Jody McCall, say hello, Jody. Hi, everyone. Jody has what uh, nearly two decades of experience in corporate America. She used to work for a big Fortune five one Fortune five hundred internationally known company. Uh, she spent nearly two decades there, and uh, she specialized in medical devices. In fact, Jody, uh, even though she is a hard driving people leader, very big picture, she used to work with a lot of technical experts, and she was using streaming services as a resource to help her develop her supervisors, her people, their direct reports. And I would tell you, she has just seen really, really fantastic results. Is this hyperbole, Jody? No, no. I definitely, everyone that participated in it thoroughly enjoyed it. Actually, after they'd go through one session, they would ask for more. It, it was very engaging. They had a lot of fun and they learned a lot. So it was a very unique way for them to, to gain more knowledge. So that right there is such a great sign. I have a friend who just went through a, uh, a company's leadership development program. And I think the consensus, at least what I was told third hand was everyone's like, get me the hell out of here. I do not want to do this again. <laughs> the opposite's true with you though. You used to call me and say, I got, I got this gentleman who's not even in my department who wants to be, take part in this. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, once the word got out, everybody really wanted a piece of it. They, they did. Now, see, to me, that says a lot. The fact that you can go over, you can cover material uh, content dealing with leadership and management. You know, when I think of leadership and management, I think it's leadership and management books, some of which are all fluff, some of which are like MBA books, which are, you know, they're written by academics. And I, I just want to stay away from them. But the fact that when you, when you present content that can help them as leaders, and, and not only do they, do they see it, but they like it. They love it. They really want to take part of it. To me, that's just a home run. So this episode is really to discuss what it looks like. What is the actual process of using resources like Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, streaming services for as a resource for leadership development? How do you do it? What are the benefits? And um, yeah, what are the major benefits and advantages? So that, that's what we're going to talk about today. So let me start out. I think the first thing that sticks out in my mind is, I think we just hit on it, it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely fun. And I don't know about you, but I binge watch some shows. Do you binge watch, Jody? Yes, I think, especially with what's going on this year in 2020, I think if you didn't binge watch shows before, you definitely are now. Um, and I think that's what the appeal of this program is. It's not picking obscure shows or movies that you know no one would watch when i would do this with people sometimes they had already watched the shows just for the entertainment value of the show and you know they watched the first time for entertainment just like everybody does sitting on your couch with your popcorn you know but then when you send them to watch it with some structure of try looking at these things, you know, they watch it with a different set of eyes. But the unique part of them coming together to talk about it after is think about when you're binge watching a show for entertainment value and you watch a show that you really like. You then get with your friends. You're like, hey, did you see this show? It was about this. It was so great. Did you see this part? Did you see this? And you're like rehashing the show for your friend. 
this program has a thread of that in it, which everybody does anyway, because you want to share the experience that you had and that you enjoyed with people that you like. So in this program, there is the nuance of kind of rehashing the show, which sometimes you actually have to bring the participants back to talking about what's at hand because they just want to rehash the shows. But after you get with the flow and the groove of it, you really start focusing on, you know, maybe this show is based on behaviors. So you're paying attention to the behaviors in it, but you're riding a fun vehicle as you do it. So it doesn't feel like learning like a lecture or a classroom, or like you mentioned a book, you still feel like you're doing something fun with your friends. Oh yeah. Uh, talk about really engaged and you're so right. People get so engaged that I'm shocked at just how fast they see the connections between the show and themselves and their, and their current environment, which is a huge, huge learning point. The fact that you can connect the learning back to the resource. Oh my gosh, it just comes naturally. And like you said, sometimes you have to come back on track. Hold on. Let's go back to the show now. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, Yeah. So I, that leads us to, I think the second thing that I wrote down that I think is just a major major benefit is the education. Now saying that when I say there's an education in a movie or in a TV series, what I mean is this, there are so many different movies and series out there that no doubt you can pluck a thousand different lessons out of them. But what you and I have found is that when you find some, there are certain shows which really highlight or emphasize some things more than others. So for instance, the one show that you and I have probably watched 10 times, at least 10 times is the people versus OJ Simpson mm -hmm. on Netflix, which what we consider our flagship, a black market mm -hmm. leadership. Uh, just for the audience, <laughs> this 10 part series, each episode is what roughly 50 to 60 minutes long. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of, there's so many different elements in there, but there are really three major elements that stick out. And that's what you and I have chose to focus on. And those are behaviors team dynamics and strategy. And if you watch the show with those three categories in mind, really just focusing on that show is incredibly rich with content, with lessons learned. How much, how, how, you know, how much content, how many lessons learned? Well, Jody and I have, I think we timed it. We spent 25 hours doing analysis on the entire series. Yes. 25 <laughs> hours. My, my, <laughs> I told you before, my immediate uh, thought when I first did this was like, ah, we'll spend 10 to 15 minutes talking about each episode and get to it. Two and a half hours later per episode, uh, again, you're able just to pluck out the lessons. And I would tell you, that's why it's so rich in content. So when I talk about behaviors, you see behaviors and almost in 3D, you see almost every angle of the behavior and why it's so important is that these behaviors that you're seeing on screen are what you're surrounded with every day. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense. Oh, I get it. That's why I act this way. That's why, you know, my spouse acts this way. That's why my coworker acts this way is because Chris Darden acted that way with Marsha Clark in the courtroom or Johnny Cochran or Robert Shapiro. So, the content is extraordinarily rich in the movies and series, and the job is just to pluck it out. So I guess my question to you, Jody, is how, what, <laughs> what's it like to sit down and coach someone and pluck out, <clears throat> pluck out the lessons? What's it, what's the experience like? So I got to be honest, you know, I think I coached maybe six groups of people, you know, the groups ranging from anywhere from two to four people in each group through the people versus OJ. And every single time I coached them, I would hear somebody pluck out something new that the groups previous to them did not see, did not analyze, you know, cause you figure you're, you're having an hour conversation about an episode. And like you just said, you and I could talk for two and a half hours for an episode. So it is not enough time to analyze every tidbit, you know, because you want to keep people engaged. Um, but doing things like giving the structure in the beginning, look at behaviors, team dynamics, and strategy. It gives the participant a focus. And then when you're coaching them through it, you know, it's like, what did you see that was about behaviors? You know, and they might give some kind of analysis and you could ask a question. Do you see any parallels to what you saw there to what's going on at work? You know, and they could draw parallels, which 
is crazy. It is crazy that you're watching a show about a brutal double homicide and you could see parallels because you're not paralleling it with the courtroom or a murder trial, things like that. You're pairing it with behaviors, strategies, and team dynamics. And what was most beneficial for me as a coach and as a leader trying to develop my leaders and their direct reports is you're trying to form a team. You're trying to form a team where, you know, Everybody doesn't have to love each other and they don't need to be best friends. But ultimately, at the end of the day, when you're a leader, you have to ensure that the work gets done. And there needs to be some kind of team atmosphere or everybody working together. You need them to understand somewhat each other's behaviors and that not everybody's going to be the same. And you, they need to understand strategy of how you get from point A to point B. So a show like this really helped to develop specifically an emerging leader or somebody very new in their career that doesn't have a lot of work experience gave an opportunity to let them get some education on these things that they have not been in the workforce long enough to have absorbed themselves. So you're really able to accelerate their education, you know, through something that they're finding enjoyable and fun. You told me the story of a, um, that, that one young man, very new. I mean, it might've been <laughs> yeah. his first job and he was making, after watching it, he was making observations about groupthink. I mean, this is stuff like, you know, I hear maybe a 45 or 50 year old executive would say he was talking about group think. I'm like, well, this guy's just out of college and he's learning this mm -hmm. just from the show. So you're absolutely right. Talk about accelerating the experience and the learn or the learning curve. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that uh, I thoroughly enjoyed doing this was uh, there was a lesson learned that I think shocked people. You know, the, when you talk about a team, a, a team that works together, plays together, that, you know, they're very cohesive. I think in a sense, people imagine a team which is very cohesive. There's harmony. So when you watch people versus OJ, the prosecution, they're all on the same side. They're all doing the same thing. They got to be a good team. And look at the defense. Even Marshall Clark said they're a bunch of alpha dogs. They're going to eat each other up. But what you find is the most effective team were those people who were had chaotic surroundings, who had the tough tough uh, discussions. Not everything was smooth, but they were effective. And in my experience, that's pro probably one of the most interesting elements or observations that teams were shocked to see that a team that doesn't argue, that doesn't have disagreements, does, that doesn't mean uh, that they're a good team at all. In fact, it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. If you're not having it, if you're not having that internal friction, you're not growing. So to me, that was just mind blowing. Uh, again, that would take years and years to learn, but, but watching the show and plucking it out, uh, you really, uh, accelerated their education. I think you bring up a good point about the, the two teams that are in people versus OJ and how they operate, you know, and that you think the prosecution by, you know, getting along is the stronger team versus the one, the defense that's chaotic, you know, in, in my experience, I was trying to teach, you know, some of the employees that it is okay to disagree. And that doesn't mean the world will end when that happens. That doesn't mean that you have to hate each other when you walk out the room. There doesn't need to be a big strife just because everybody doesn't agree with someone's opinion. You know, how do you give an opinion and accept that people might not agree? How do you explain yourself? You know, so having the defense team as an example of that, you know, helped. And I also think it showed that if there is no disagreement or explaining, you also don't get to the best conclusion. If you just agree with the first person that speaks up, which is a lot of times what happens with the prosecution, everybody agrees with Marsha because she's so strong. So to be able to have the courage to speak up and disagree, but also to how do you deal with if people are disagreeing with you? Those are tough lessons to learn, especially when you're first starting out in your career. And especially if you were a little quieter, maybe on the shyer side, that becomes extremely difficult. It's hard to teach that. So having a vehicle like this to show it is priceless. Yeah, it, it really puts you, it's like putting, it's like becoming a fly on the wall in the room of others, exactly. seeing how they act, seeing how they think. Mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, this really goes to the third point and which is experience, right? Yes. I mean, would you, would you agree that people have actually now improved their education, but you've actually seen 
improvements, uh, not just an experience, but even maturity, right? Yes. And I think how that happens is because as they're watching a show and as they're dissecting what they're seeing and they're making parallels with what's going on in their everyday lives at work and they are making parallels with themselves and, and all of that, they are gaining experience through the show versus gaining experience from their own failures. You know, a lot of times you learn the most when something doesn't go the way it's supposed to. Like who learns something when it goes right? You, you don't because you're just riding the high that everything went perfectly. So when something goes wrong, that's the biggest opportunity to learn something, but it is very difficult for a lot of people to get over the feeling of failure or defeat and actually pluck out the lessons to learn. It is very difficult to do that. Take these years just to even do that, much less actually walk away with the lessons. So this, you get to watch other people fail and dissect those failures and then gain all the experience from it without having to go through that emotional strife yourself. Yes. And unlike reading a book, now, I mean, look, there are books that can be very passionate that can draw you in the characters, but I think it takes a certain amount of a, uh, mental energy spent. So you got to burn mm -hmm. some calories to do that with a show. Uh, as we said at the beginning, how in fun and engaging, there are some shows you get really caught up with the characters. You really start to empathize and you see and feel, you feel their frustration, you feel their success. And like you say, you start making those connections. So in that sense, uh, yeah, you are, you are gaining experience and from the, some of the work that you and I did, you remember we were measuring maturity levels and, and, mm -hmm. and for the audience, when I mean maturity, I mean, it, it, what that means is a person's ability to adapt behaviorally. Some people come into a, you know, to a company, to a, a role, they have their natural behavior, like a bull in the China shop, but they don't realize, <laughs> Hey, I got this great idea. I don't care that you've been here 20 years, Jody. I got this great idea. <laughs> when you watch this and you, when you see people who speak out when they should it, you see the ramifications mm -hmm. and you know, what scene I'm talking about and people yes. versus OJ, Oh, mm -hmm. I cringe when I watch it I'm like, Oh no, don't. <laughs> but people realize it. And boy, I know from our discussions, you've had some, <laughs> some interesting, uh, you've had some interesting feedback. And the one example I want to bring up, and I, I would ask you to elaborate, um, who, the one gentleman who did not like Marsha Clark. Oh, this was great. All. This was great. Um, so, you know, somebody who wasn't working with the company very long, this was their first real career kind of job. And, you starting with this program and the very first meeting that we had uh, episode one of OJ, he said, you know, he almost had to turn off the TV because he couldn't watch Marsha. She was so off putting and, and whatnot. And I was like, wow, because, you know, I could see some similarities with myself. So it was like, who going to have to really tread lightly with this employee? I don't want to be his, his real life Marsha. So then we keep going and we're watching the show and then you get to episode six, which is Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. And in this episode, all the walls around Marsha come down and you really see her as a person who is going through her own emotional struggles. And you finally see all the punches that she's taking and you as a viewer have empathy for her. And he came into the, the meeting that we had about episode six and his whole outlook on Marsha changed because he saw it from a different side. So he really learned a lesson on perception that what you see going on in the outside might not be the whole story. And what I thought was really great from that was several things that it, that it opened up people's minds and it, it gained some perspective, but on several levels, it helped gain perspective between coworkers because you never really know what's going on and everybody forms an opinion about everybody else, which could make or break relationships and the work environment and whatnot. The other thing that I think it did, and if you're a leader out there, you might be able to really um, connect with this next comment. As a leader or as the person in charge, you can never really tell your side of the story. You have to uphold the company standards. You have to be the company man per se. You have to do the right thing. No matter how upset people are, you know, you can explain what you're doing and some of the why, but you can never really 
ever tell all the bits and pieces. You know, if somebody's upset with you, you got to just let it happen. This example here of this person seeing Marsha in the beginning and seeing this facade she had and how strong she was and then see her break down in episode six really showed the burden that a leader has. And, you know, Marsha a lot of times is tough. She strikes out. She's stressed. All these things that are not great. And you would look at that person and be like, she's awful. She's treating her people terribly. But then you connect all the dots of everything she's dealing with behind the scenes that all the people that she's working with probably don't know either. And people watching this and going through this program really have like a mind blow moment that there is much more to everyone's story than anyone ever knows. And it really affords people some patience with each other to take a breath before they react. And, you know, what I would say in this instant of coaching was, you know, if somebody starts acting out of character, you know, they're normally, you know, A, and all of a sudden they start acting like B, that's for you then to be like, something's going on here, not just be like that person's, you know, being a jerk. And people actually started doing that, you know, started realizing when somebody was acting out of character, you know, because that is their response to something that's going on. That's not who they authentically are. And don't judge them for that moment. Remember who they really are. So to have that deep of a lesson come out of a sh TV show, how could you ever ever teach that on with a slide presentation you literally cannot and i think it's with what you said earlier you know of watching the show versus a book books are great and stuff and a lot of times when you have a new hire you ask how somebody learns do you learn by reading or do you learn by doing a majority of people learn by doing and i feel like that's what the streaming services bring you literally live the journey with the characters as they are going through it because you are feeling their emotion. You, you're like in it, you're enveloped in it. And while you can do that in a book, if you have good imagination, but that usually comes from fictional stories, not a leadership book, you know, you can do it with a TV show because you're getting all the emotion through the actors. And that's what really makes the lessons be hit home. Yeah, totally agree. And you bring up a point that I think we have to uh, we have to make sure to emphasize this. Streaming services as a resource, uh, it's a fantastic resource. It's rich in content. However, you are not sitting down. You're not telling people to sit down and just watch it and come back to me with, with lessons. This yeah. requires support, real support. So it's true. They are not reading the business books, but guess who are reading the business books? It's the coaches. Mm -hmm. It's the people like Jody and I who've actually read it and uh, the books, the, the lectures, the YouTube videos done all the background. If you're going to, if you're going to use streaming services as a resource, you have to be very, very careful on the people who are who are in charge of leveraging it, you got to make mm -hmm. sure that you have you actually have really good support and not just Joe Schmo. What did you feel? What did you think? That that's not that's they'll get you nowhere. I 100% agree. If if that's what's happening, you might as well just have your group of friends sitting around rehashing a show because that's what it is at that point. It's a book you know, club. That's all it yeah, is. Yes, you really need to understand the show. You really need to understand the lessons that are being presented in it. You need to understand which scenes highlight those things, you know, and you have to have prepared some examples, real life examples of how this is played out. You know, you can't just, like you said, rely on the participant to do the heavy lifting. The participant is watching the show and they're going to watch it with the structure that you give, but you really have to guide them through it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and at the end, you have to have an action plan. You have to work with them. So you saw the scene about Marsha and Chris Darden. What does it mean? How does it affect you? What are the connections between you and your role now? And what are you going to do to better yourself, to improve your, your performance there? That's really big. And mm -hmm. to me, that could be a, a, a quicksand in, in, in this journey because the, the shows are great. They're fun, but you have to be able to pluck them out and pluck them out correctly. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said earlier of all the things that people versus OJ of these 10 episodes, there are three things we focus on behaviors, team dynamics, and strategy. 
other shows uh, exist, other movies exist. And you have some movies are fantastic. I'm thinking of Ford versus Ferrari, which we're, we're doing a review on, or I should say an analysis on. Great movie. The Founder. Fantastic movie. Those are great movies because like the founder is great about, you know, entrepreneurship, culture, motivators. Mm-hmm. But there's some movies out there, which I think uh, they, they're leadership movies in a sense. I'll give you an example. My favorite movie in the world uh, since a child has, has been Patton with George C. Scott. I love that movie. I would not use that movie as a resource. Why? It's not about leadership. It's about a character. It's about a character and his, and his view of destiny, which is great. Interesting. But I think there are other movies other series which could be better spent a uh, better way to spend our time plucking the lessons out that's not one of them so you have to be you have to really learn how to discriminate between good educational shows with real content mm-hmm. versus those which look and feel good but are light on things which are applicable to you in the role totally agree you can't just pick a show like i watched this i really enjoyed it so now now let's do a coaching program on it. That's not how it works. You know, you, yes, enjoying the show is one of the elements because that will help keep people engaged. I mean, I actually coached someone through People versus OJ and they were so upset that we were slowing down the progress. Like they wanted to binge watch the temp episodes. It was like, no, no, you're only watching one a week. So you can focus on the individual episode and the lessons learned there. So that in itself was a learning experience. This person, you know, like to do things very fast, clearly impatient, you know, and it was like, no, 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 there is some structure to this. It can still be fun, but let's, you know, go about it in a way that you're going to actually learn something for it. So there was a lesson just in that conversation with the person. So it can't just be what someone wants to watch because they threw on Netflix, you know, it, it, it can't be that it has to be part of a larger program. And, and yes. I'll give you an example. Uh, I worked with an executive once and we were going to do people versus OJ. So I said, watch episodes one and two. We're going to start this process because that's, that's where we start our baseline. Mm-hmm. And cause he wanted to learn about behavior. So uh, I talked to him a week after turns out he binge watched the entire thing and he probably spent 20 seconds saying, yeah, I liked it. It's really good. Pretty interesting. And that was it. <laughs> so I say that because that was extraordinarily revealing about him. Mm-hmm. Just his response, his response to those, those directions of taking his time, of analyzing it. He just jumped into it. Yeah, okay. Just that in itself was a coaching lesson. If mm-hmm. you're doing that here, where else is that showing up? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so. Exactly. So same thing. The person that I was working with, you know, she wasn't actually my direct report. She was a direct report of one of my direct reports. So I was able to give my leader some advice about this person that she's going to be fast paced and she's going to be very impatient. I can tell you that right now. So, you know, that is going to have to be part of your coaching program with her and think about that when you give her tasks or goals or things like that, that this is how she naturally wants to address something or she wants to just plow right through it. And that's not always the best way. Yeah. I I would tell you personally, I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed doing this with you, especially doing this on video, because uh, I would tell you, I've been in, you know, I've been in this industry for 20 years. Um, I, I think I even up my game doing just the 25 hour analysis with you. (laughs) And I would tell you one of the examples I want, I want the listeners to hear was, you know, behaviorally, I'm a high dominant low P. I am, ex- I, I, I am all mission. Would you not agree, Jody? I'm all mission. Yes, you are <laughs> definitely all mission. And Jody is a high extrovert. She's mission, but she is, she's high extrovert. She's really about the people. And her, she, like me, were very fast paced. But doing this with you, I was shocked at the different observations that you and I had of the same scenes. I would see things that were obviously mission oriented, which about getting the mission accomplished. I would see things about, you know, maybe internal politics. And then you would pluck out this thing, which you would think I'd never heard of called the human element. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I felt like a serial killer. Like what is this thing called emotions? What is this thing? And, and I'll give you one example was, um, 
at the beginning, again, I'm not spoiling anything for people versus OJ, by the way, he did it. Uh, <laughs> spoiler but, alert. Yeah. Spoiler alert. But the scene where uh, the night she's killed, the cops come into the home and we see Mark Furman and the other detectives. And I was talking about the processes knows how, uh, you know, by the book, Mark Furman is a real, uh, you know, this guy is really, really knows what he, he's doing. Look at all the experience. And then you made a point about how the cop was going upstairs uh, in Nicole Brown Simpson's home and the kids are in the bed. And you're like, do you realize that, you know, the ice cream is, is, is on the tub, the water's in there, it's warm, the kids are sleeping, mm -hmm. you know, their mother's just been murdered. And mm -hmm. I, I thought, yeah, just, you know, okay, that's a part of the murder, but I never realized the emotional element to it. I mean, I knew it, but I never appreciated that. So saying that, doing that just with you, mm -hmm. I have been very cognizant when I work with people now of making sure to look for that thing called emotions mm -hmm. <laughs> and make sure that I respect it. And I, and I really, really, um, yeah, I really listen for it and do my best to, uh, uh, comply or not comply, but support other support others and their decisions. That's what you can learn from a program like this too. There's an extreme amount of self-awareness you gain, not just experience how to deal with other people or how to deal with a, your boss or how to be a boss or things like that. The self-awareness that you get, you know, that you're saying that now you've taken back to work differently with other people. It's huge. It is absolutely huge. And I'm not sure how else you can get that without just like living your life, which literally takes years, years upon years upon years to try to learn. And then once you notice what you have as strengths and maybe what you have as development areas, now you have to work on developing it where this is all consuming that you can learn your strengths, learn your development areas and be developing it immediately. Yes. I, <laughs> yeah. A huge self-awareness. And like you said, it takes, I mean, just from experience, it takes decades to get this kind of self-awareness. If, if you're even conscious, uh, consciously trying to get it. And that was the thing I've been around people my whole life, but watching this, I, I you know, when you do strategy, we, we usually, I think we at the executive level, when you're thinking really big picture, sometimes that human element is diminished because you're thinking about the pieces, the parts, mm -hmm. but uh, just going through that, it was, it really reinforced, wow, I, I can't believe I, I, I have not been focusing on that. I, I, I really didn't have the appreciation and not having that appreciation, or at least I should say it's appreciating that element has really helped me understand other people's decisions. Yes. You know, um, so I'm always, you know, there's never a time where I don't throw military history in our talk yes, and I, I yes, <laughs> <laughs> Very true. And uh, what was so fascinating was I was just reading a book about uh, World War II, shocker. And one of the elements, one of the things that you read about in history is how Churchill uh, was not that he was against D-Day, but he was reticent or reluctant to, to fully commit to D-Day. And there have been many reasons why he wouldn't attack south of Europe. He just wanted to attack the periphery, which, you know, these are like just strategic options. But one thing I read in it, I don't think I had the real appreciation was, you know, a lot of these British generals, including Churchill, remember the massacre of World War I, just the horrendous loss of life. And Churchill and Knight would have nightmares dreaming about 30,000 dead British boys in the English Channel if D-Day went wrong. It's that element. Mm -hmm. And I never considered it. So I'm much more careful of my analyses now. Maybe he did have a, a disagreement in terms of strategy. He did, maybe didn't like the way it was happening. But there's also element that those are his people. And he mm -hmm. saw these young men and women possibly dying. And he was sick and tired of it. So I get it. I don't have to agree with it, but I empathize with it. And it helps my understanding. So yeah, um, with the right coaching, with the right analysis, and the right show, you can pluck out things which are just amazing. And you mm -hmm. mentioned Waco. Waco is a fantastic movie about culture, values, artifacts, all the things which make a culture and which ultimately affect decision making. And guess what? Not a good ending, but you see how those forces are in play. And by watching it, by feeling it, you, in a sense, are preparing yourself for 
may be similar situations which require hard choices and it's helping you to avoid making bad decisions obviously help you make good decisions yeah like everything not to do (laughs) exactly so so just to give the audience an example uh what kind of shows are good? Look, there are many shows out there. We have not watched all of them, but I just want to give a, a brief catalog, a brief view of our catalog that we're doing. So I mentioned OJ, People versus OJ, American Crime Story. Great show on behaviors, team dynamics, and strategy. All those things combined. Uh, Mindhunter. I love Mindhunter. And Mindhunter is about one thing, behaviors 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 that's a great show that i i would call that like a level two show if i was going to uh, certify someone and in, in our behavioral tool i would use that mm-hmm. uh manhunt the f- episode or season one about the unabomber great show that's about what uh innovation breaking from tradition uh behaviors play an element in that too definitely behaviors mm-hmm uh, one show that I loved and I had, a, I really had to convince you to watch it, which you ultimately liked it, uh, was Texas Rising, which is about management and leadership. And I remember you telling me you had some, uh, when you, when you were promoting this show, you mm-hmm. had some resistance to it at first, didn't you? Yes, because I don't think this is like a typical show you would throw on to just watch for entertainment. You might, because again, you love everything military and history, but not everybody else does. So, you know, it's a little bit of an older show. It is military and history, you know, so it wouldn't be in my normal catalog of shows to watch. For the listener, Texas Rising is a story of how Texas became independent in the 1840s. Or 1840s, yeah, 1840s. So it's it's back a long time away with the Texans versus the Mexicans versus even the U.S. Army ultimately gets involved. So it's a long time ago, just to give the listener some context. So please continue. So, you know, it wouldn't be in my normal catalog to watch. So that's where I think that you have to, you know, really be participating in the program because you want to learn and you want to develop. So there has to be a trust element there of the person that you have coaching you and facilitating the conversation that you're going to jump into feet and really give something a chance. And I did. And once you do with the structure that you're given on how to watch the show and you're trying to pluck out the lessons, it becomes more than just watching it for entertainment. And that's where I learned something too, because then I took this show to do it to some of my people. And when asking for feedback on the program and streaming services, whatever, you know, it was like, well, I really liked Waco, but not so much Texas rising. And right there, a bell went off for me as this person is really only looking at this on the entertainment value and not what they could actually learn. And if you watch Texas Rising and you didn't learn anything, there's kind of a problem that needs to be probably addressed, you know, in someone's development, you know, because if, if you're participating in this, there is something to learn. If there's a show that's identified, there is something to take away from it. So I think, you know, some of the shows are going to be in your wheelhouse if you might've just watched it because it was entertaining, but some might be a little off the grid for you, but I think that's okay. It exposes you to different things that you might have never been exposed to before yeah you had some people i'm thinking uh i'm going to use a fake name nicole if i'm correct she was a little reticent to watch it then she watched it and she liked it yes true very much yes so in a sense uh in one sense it helps broaden people's perspective you actually learn bits of history (laughs) out of it and the other uh it really expands expands your mind it allows you see to see that there are lessons you know, not just in military, but in business. Uh, one of, I, I love the founder with Michael Keaton. Fantastic movie about McDonald's, the rise of McDonald's. Mm-hmm. I love Mindhunter, you know, about the FBI. Uh, Waco, about the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> Manhunt season two, about the FBI. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, a lot of FBI shows. This is, I would say that this is definitely not the decade or this is definitely not the year of FBI mm-hmm. on the streaming services. I'll just say that mm-hmm. <laughs> there's a variety of shows. There's a whole multitude of shows. And what uh, I think it one of the great advantages of using series is to expand people's uh, 
to get a real growth mindset, to see things beyond just business. Look at shows about entrepreneurship. We're doing a show on Playboy, the Hugh Hefner show on Amazon, which is phenomenal, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But that, but you know, this is black market leadership. I'm, I'm assuming your company's probably not going to pay, you know, have you come and watch a show about Playboy. It's a fantastic show about entrepreneurship, risk taking, going against the grain. The inspiration from that show. I, I was so inspired. I, I could not turn it off. Thank goodness you didn't put any restrictions on me. I could just been watch the whole thing while we did it. Um, but the innovation that you Hefner had, you know, and I remember watching the show and my husband walked in the room and I turned to him and I said, I had no idea there was articles in Playboy. Zero. I mean, I've never looked at a Playboy, you know, it's like, you know, it is sold with, you know, a mindset. You, mm -hmm. you form a bias on it of, about what the content is in the magazine. And then you watch the show that the interviews that he was doing and he was always doing articles on like present topics. I was totally blown away, especially how it started, that it gave men's fashion advice and all this other stuff. Like I said to my husband, I was like, I, I'm almost tempted to ask you to go buy Playboy so I can read the articles. You know, <laughs> like I'm just so intrigued. Is the magazine today the way it was, or at least a little bit like it was in the past? But seeing um, you, Hefner, have an aspiration of working for a magazine that he really embraced as a child and helped him to kind of become a man. And then when he got there, it was not the environment he wanted. He was not challenged. It was not fulfilling at all. So for him to take a leap of faith and to try to start something on his own, number one, to see that kind of courage play out on the screen really makes you feel like, hey, if you're not happy with something, Maybe you can do something else. You're not stuck in a rut. And then to watch it, the innovation that happened, and it doesn't just happen with the birth of the magazine. It is over and over and over again. I mean, what was he, like a million years old? And he had the reality TV show of like the, the Playboy bunnies with him and whatever in the 90s. I mean, it was just nonstop innovation and what's the next big thing. So to watch that kind of mindset was so inspiring, you know, that no matter what kind of business you're in, whether you're an entrepreneur, you're working in a company, like you can't live by the, well, this is the way we've always done it. And I heard that a lot in corporate America. And to me and my behavioral style, that was kind of stifling, not encouraging, you know, yeah, I like big challenges. I like unique assignments. I like, you know, well, how are we going to do this? Let's give it a shot. So I was blown away by the Playboy series. Absolutely blown away by the, the innovation. It was 100% inspiring. I felt that same way about the founder, too. The one scene in there where they're reinventing their business model on the tennis court. And it's like, again, let's do it again. Let's figure this out. There is a better way to do this. I'm sure if someone was videoing my face, watching it, my mouth was gaping open, my eyes were wide, and I was just taking it all in that there is always something better. Yeah. And that's why it's such a great coaching tool. It shows mm -hmm. you that it, it, it can be done. It has been done. And especially the Playboy, the constant branding. I think the Playboy Bunny, I think is the number, I think there's a ranking number three or fourth most recognized brand in the world. And the fact mm -hmm. that he did that constantly to stay within, it's just a wonderful, wonderful, that series is a wonderful tool for entrepreneurs, people who may, who have an idea, they don't know how to get started. They don't, not just how to get started, but once you do it, what, what's required of you. So in a sense, they're inspirational, but if you watch it, if you watch it, you learn about the mechanics of the business, about putting mm -hmm. the right people in the roles, about firing the wrong people, about mm -hmm. staying on course. So again, these streaming services shows have, they're so rich in content. They're fantastic. They're fun and engaging. And with the right support, you can pluck out the right things. So finally, finally, we've talked about the fun element, the educational element, the experiential element. The question is, 
how does this process run? And that's something that you and I've talked about. So how does a streaming services like program go? And really there's two ways. There's a do it yourself and there's a tailored coaching, right? Mm-hmm. And that's one thing that you and I've done that when I said we did 25 hours of uh, people versus OJ, that's not for everyone, a black market leadership. If you're a member of black market leadership, and if you're not, please sign up, be a free membership. So a lot of this content is free. It's not there to watch all the videos, but if you watch a series and you see a certain scene or an episode that really you're interested in learning more, check out our analysis. Uh, so that's really the do it yourself. The videos, uh, we, Jody and I have actually gone through and analyzed in great detail how these scenes r- relate to behaviors, uh, strategy, team dynamics. So that's really the do it yourself. The videos are already made, but the tailored coaching is a little different. That's where you take, you know, Jody, you're brand new. You're a brand new member to black market leadership. You want to focus, you know, more on your self-confidence, your ability to speak up. So what traditionally we do a behavioral profile, we'll identify specific shows or series, series are much more in depth. And that's where you really focus on characters or shows which are pertinent to you in your situation. And you pluck out those lessons and then we actually measure growth. And then you take those lessons and implement them in your life. And we support you with other tools. So that's really the tailored coaching experience. It's really about making sure that the resource is tailored for you and that you get something out of it. And that's basically what you did back uh, in the days when you were coaching your people, mm-hmm. affecting, directly affecting their performance. What, you, what are your final thoughts on this? I think um, that a lot of people probably go through their whole career and don't learn this stuff. You know, I think a lot of businesses try to coach and develop people. Um, I think a lot of leaders try to coach and develop their direct reports. But what you don't know, you don't know. And you certainly can't teach. And I think this is a safe, fun way to learn and grow through experiences that aren't your own. And it really accelerates your ability to grow and have career successes that might take you years, if, if ever, of achieving, you know, because you didn't develop yourself and you were not able to meet those milestones. So, you know, I think it's very fun whether you're on the side of being the coach or the participant Um, I think that no matter what role you play in it, you always walk away learning something because someone in the conversation brings something up that you didn't see or didn't anticipate. And I I, I think it, it never gets stagnant because with new coaches or new participants, it's always a different experience. You know, I, I think I did people versus OJ, like I said, six or seven times and every single time it was different. I mean, that's incredible that you could have seven conversations about episode one and have seven different experiences. So it's not like a one and done. You do the course, you learned everything you could, and now you move on to something else or you never use it. That's not how it goes at all. Um, So I think it remains relevant and it's just so much fun. It's, It's a different learning vehicle that... I have not had the ability to see or participate anywhere else. And, you know, at this stage of life, you've already done with school. You don't want to be in a classroom. You don't want to be reading textbooks. You don't want to be doing that kind of stuff because your day already like nine to five is full of procedures, standards, rules, this, that, and the other thing. So the ability to be able to learn on a vehicle of fun as an adult is something very unique that I don't think you're going to find a lot of places. Totally agree. That's a great, great points. Great points. And that is the end of this episode. I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to the show. If you enjoyed what you heard, please subscribe to iTunes and leave a review. It's very much appreciated. Additionally, you can head over to my website, kevinblack.co. That's kevinblack.co to learn more. See you next week.